Now imagine taking these physics in GTA and implementing them into a football game. Sounds silly? Well... Broke my the appropriately named backbreaker football is quite a complicated game. I mean, you have British people developing an American football game. We're not even a minute in yet, and I bet you're already confused. Backbreaker football was first released on mobile devices, and it was fine. This was pre-monetization era of mobile games, so you know it's decent, or at the very least, not something like this. Natural Motion Games, the developer behind Backbreaker, would go on to eventually release a PS3 and Xbox 360 version of this game. The whole game is centered on the Euphoria physics engine, which is most famous for Nico Bellic stumbling around drunk. But in this case, it's an engine that looks to eliminate canned and scripted animations for something that's a little bit more... natural. Hence the name. How does anyone find that funny? I mean, look at virtually any interview, trailer, or announcement always using the same terms and buzzwords that allude to the physics engine. And because of this, we had a competitor to Madden that truly did something different. But the question is, does it work? for the most part. Listen, I'm gonna get this out of the way immediately. Backbreaker is not a good football game. The game doesn't have the NFL license, so you have to use teams the game provides. I picked the team that has the subliminal penis in the logo. That's a penis. There's also a logo editor in the game, so if you're talented enough and are capable of doing more than what I'm capable of, then you should get some halfway decent looking team. The presentation in Backbreaker is almost non-existent. Like, you know how most sports games have, like, some type of music in the menus? I'm not even asking for licensed music. Maybe some instrumental pieces that give off some Sam Spence vibes, you know what I mean? What we get is just... I don't even know what. Sounds like you're trapped inside of the basement of the stadium while a game is going on. Did the stadium just get nuked? What else could that even be? Well, the lackluster presentation extends past the creepy pasta-esque menus. The actual game has no commentary, barely any stadium atmosphere, and every player looks exactly the same with these Robocop looking visors. But none of that matters if the gameplay is good, right? Well, Backbreaker decides to go away from the traditional over the head view you get in Madden or NFL 2K. Instead, it decides to have the camera all up on your back like a Jaden Smith hug. The idea behind this is to capture the rush and feel of being on the field, but this camera view for both offense and defense is just terrible. On defense, you could switch between players like any other game, but since the camera is from the perspective of one guy, it gets confusing. Like, does this play not look confusing as all hell? What the hell is going on? They try everything to make it less confusing. You can hold the button for the camera to track the ball, and they make the ball carrier have a nice piss aura around him so he can stand out. But it's not ideal to play this way, in my opinion. Not to say that it doesn't succeed in some ways it sets out to. Blitzing with a cornerback to sack the QB is one of the funnest things to do in this game. Running down at full speed to lay down a big hit is satisfying, especially with the physics. But these things don't outweigh the fact that this is an awkward way to play the game. The controls are another thing that goes against conventional wisdom. The movement is similar to something like The Last of Us, believe it or not. The left stick controls your movement, but the right stick turns your whole body. 
I'm assuming this was done because the game leans into the whole realism aspect where your line of sight doesn't capture everything. But after a while, this could be fun playing man defense. Another fun thing to do is causing fumbles. The ball actually gets jarred loose from a big hit as opposed to taking a big hit and the ball just falling out. And let me tell you, a loose ball in Backbreaker is the equivalent to the crash mode in Burnout, but with human bodies instead. Even things like defensive players jumping to deflect a pass from the QB up in the air is something that makes you go, wow, this is actually cool and something that's never been done in Madden. But that's backbreaker in general. You think, oh man, this sucks. But then you see something like ball carriers reaching for the first down line and you're like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But what's not impressive is offense. The defense has some bright spots, but offense has almost no positives. The passing game is so diabolically bad that you'd think some kind of Saturday morning cartoon villain was behind it. So the passing has the same close camera, but the main problem is that the game uses the right analog stick. You have to use the right analog stick to look down the field. When your piss yellow receiver turns into a catch up red receiver, that means that is the receiver that you are going to throw to. You can push L2 to activate focus mode, and this pushes the camera even closer to your back to lock on to receivers easier. This system just isn't fun. The argument for this is that once again, it's more realistic, but it doesn't really hold water. On top of the use of the right analog stick being awkward, there's just too many things that can go wrong with this. You can lock on to the wrong receiver. You can accidentally switch to the wrong receiver. In real life, your eyes can survey the field faster than they ever could in this game. If you notice a heavy rush, getting rid of the ball quickly in response is harder than it should be. You have to scroll the camera to the desired receiver, then push the stick up and hope you don't make a mistake along the way. In literally any other game, you just press a button to do this. I just want to get the ball to my check down receiver, not do a damn Einstein project. It's overly cumbersome, an argument of realism doesn't really work in my opinion. And because of this control scheme, you can't even throw on the run, which is the nastiest thing I've ever heard for a football game. That's disgusting. The running game is also not good. This is one of the things that's actually hindered by the physics. With the exception of outside runs and pitches, any run that goes up the middle just ends with me running directly into the ass of my lineman. Shout out to Mark Sanchez. <laughs> this even happens to the CPU. You might say to slow down and bounce to the outside, but the controls just don't allow it. When you slow down in the game, you do this Looney Tunes twinkle toes shit. <laughs> like, what is this even supposed to be? I don't even... <laughs> anyway, yeah, offense sucks. If only the game had a mode which focused on avoiding tacklers and showcasing the physics. Oh wait, there is one. Tackle Alley is a mode where you avoid tacklers for 100 waves. This mode is essentially a greased up deaf guy simulator. You're never gonna catch me. You're wasting your time. Forget about it. Go do something else. See you next year. The waves vary by adding different routes for each defender, point squares to collect, and out of bounds areas that you have to stay out of. Combining all of this with the euphoria physics leads to some great moments. Stiff farming has never been funner in a football game. Get the fuck off me, bitch! Hold on, get the fuck off me, pussy! Hey, little boy! Little boy! Damn! Having two defenders collide into each other is hilarious, and so is the fact that you can be surprised sometimes. I guess this is one of the weird wins for the close ass camera, but still the camera is not ideal. Your body literally blocks the middle of the screen. Listen, enough with this realism nonsense. 
In real life, my eyesight has never been obscured by my own torso. The physics itself is great, only a little awkward as sometimes I have no clue why I go down. I'm about to turn this into a 2015 Randy Orton RKO meme. Look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Metacle Alley is the highlight of the game. The season mode, you can set up a whole league. You can incorporate your own custom teams and practically recreate the NFL if you wanted, or any custom league for that matter. The actual season mode itself has some weird inclusions, like you don't spend money on free agents, you spend backbreaker credits. Shit, might as well use Chuck E. Cheese tokens at that point. You can't afford this footballer? In case you guys didn't believe me that this is a European game. For you Europeans watching, this is the equivalent of me calling football soccer. There are no injuries despite the game being called the backbreaker. And there's not even a way to simulate games. And once again, it's like I said before, Backbreaker does great things and then does some mind-numbingly dumb things as well. Like, how can you have the foresight to know people would want a logo editor to add custom teams and incorporate them into a custom league, but at the same time neglect to add the ability to sim games? And because you can't sim games, it forces you to play the actual game, which we already went over how that is. Backbreaker is a game that's two steps forward and two steps back, and it seems it doesn't even know what it wants to be. What is Backbreaker? On the surface, you'd say it's a football simulation aiming to be as realistic as possible with these physics and camera angles, but at the same time, it seems something closer to an arcade experience. Whatever the case, Backbreaker didn't review well when released and debuted with disappointing sales. You could say what you want, but you can't say the developers didn't care. Months after the game release, they released the Great House patch, which added things like better replay control, more plays, and the most important feature any game has ever implemented. Here Comes the Boom by PLD will play less. Truly, truly revolutionary. This was the version I played, and even with this update, the game still isn't good. This single play right here shows everything that's wrong with Backbreaker. So I'm playing deep safety, and I see the quarterback throwing the ball my way. In response, I attempt to run back to make a play on the ball. But as soon as I do so, for some reason I go and grab my own teammate, and I snap my wrist in the process. Then the camera spazzes out. Then I go up for the interception, and the ball somehow goes through my hands. Then the ball somehow goes through my teammate's hands. The wide receiver catches the ball around my waist, holds the ball up against my ass for like a second, then drops it, and the game says it's a touchdown without completing the full process of the catch. This is why I wanted to make this video again. Backbreaker is a game that had such great potential for a sequel, and the funny thing is, we did get a sequel. Backbreaker 2 Vengeance. The most cliche subtitle. Like, who the hell is vengeful? <laughs> Bro, it's football. This was a downloadable game that's even more obscure than the first game, mostly because it has no football, it's just tackle alley with more stuff like things to jump over and this slide. Most people ignored it, and that was the end of the Backbreaker franchise. Since then, Natural Motion has been banished to mobile game purgatory. They made Icebreaker Hockey, which is in the same vein as Tackle Alley from Backbreaker. Today, they're making some Star Wars 4v4 arena shooter. Tell me if this is any good. Anyone? I don't know. But the dream of ever seeing Backbreaker again is dead. A football game with these physics had massive potential and gave people looking for an alternative to Madden like me hope. But instead, all we got was a glorified physics tech demo that I like less and less each time I revisit it.